the scene is, I just, you know, I was going to go relating to Christ, but then I, did you read that in the paper about the, uh, was it geologist? Well, this is a vague uh, recollection of it, that it was the custom at the time Christ was crucified for Jewish women to give the people who were about to be crucified a drug that would put them in a death-like trance. And th that this happened, that Christ's mother gave him the drug and that he was, you know, you know so. That's, wow, it's, it's amazing that, that if that's true. Okay, hold all guns. I'll find the light in a minute. Let it be God's eye shining on us, raised from the whack that made worlds. Behold, all who dare, heaven or hell's ill-lit green room, the place to find peace or BJ's, eternal DT's or boiled balls. Hubert's museum, no less, which is where they put New York's best freaks in glass cases as opposed to just boxes. This is where sick itself came to die. <laughs> you dig? Death I shock. Oh, baby, let me tell you I get it. Let me mark it, and let me piss on it like a dog, six feet underground in the air, a faintly hovering place stuck beneath your feet, buried heaven, the place where sins seep. Frozen gargoyles are placed in the fridge and on sticks. Raspberry demon, you bet. Next to the lemon prostitute, thank you. Chocolate chip cyclops, pistachio Christ, tits in line. Oh, I love it. Hubert's. I used to come in here on a come down. Restored my vision, settled my soul. Quite a trip. Because the dead do not fade. They just slip in behind mirrors. They slide themselves into paintings. Or in the folds of air between birds. That's where I am, that slip. That's what you get from clean living. You get betrayed. When breath leaves you, it surrenders you up to the host. Are there any better freaks than the dead? They're still the best definition. Distorted life, fresh dimensions. Man, that'd screw up your view straight away. Dirty, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, it's a scam. But you know what they say? Make the good bad, and you miss out on the extra. You miss out on the magic that the dirty thing came to be. Because if this had been real, we could have called it illegal in a public space, you know? Uh, but as it is, it's just funny. A, a partially emphasized dick. Because at least in, in, in the old days, but, but, but not now. Not now that you get this sort of thing in, in, uh, in soap opera. Spunk bubbles are funny. They leave you stained, man, not clean, because that is obscene. There it is. Masturbation. Masturbation, erection, and an open mouth. Oral sex. The three major things which get the dick and joint jumping. Or did in my day, which is what I had to get through to earn this. Because the dirty word rides on that big burst of love, man. It breaks out across silence in that one crazy shoot. Uh, things are different now, but back when I started in the 60s, by which I mean the, the late 50s, there was this impossible wall that only sharp sound could get over, you know? Jazz, Coltrane, Burroughs, Kerouac, Ginsburg, Miles, Albert Ayliff, all that. Spirits rejoice. We were singing, each one of us stretching, erecting ourselves in the dark. Names, man, and notes. That's all you get when God gets you. God on the cops. When they're coming, stick to your guns. They got theirs. And it's crazy, so crazy, because we get embarrassed over the funniest thing. I mean, I also bought this. It's a proper postcard from heaven. A tiny and titty reminder of what an angel is straight from God. Now, what I put to you, what I say to you first, is this dirty? I mean, I don't say I'm offended, but I will say it is clean. 
Yeah, angel clean in its natural state is a picture. Because it's only the way that we use it that might make it dirty. It's only the way that we see it that might make it clean. I mean, hang that on the wall next to anyone's Virgin Mary. Woman as woman, as she is and was in the heat. Are you telling me the Virgin Mary had scenes which kept her skin bound and hidden? Are you telling me the Virgin Mary is a Muslim? That skin and titty so special that only God gets to see? Why does that make him or, or her or it for that matter? Well, I'll tell you. A cybernetic transitional lesbo voyeur. A prying eye, sly but sure, slipping in through the hijab or the Jewish veil or the habit. Man, those habits of old, they peel us. Are there any cops here? Or priests? <laughs> here I am, man. Come get me. As you did before, Romans, for a shot of the sweet virgin's titties, here I am on the rack. I was going to say in plain sight. <laughs> As you know, death is darkness. Death, friends, is theater, playing pretend with real life. So to me, this is art. This is a very beautiful picture. It's Vermeer. Frozen moments that in reflection and mind film, film full scenes. The, the object is art. Magritte or uh, McTit or Picasso. The girl is posed and exploited, but through her beauty, she sculpts her way to free life. So uh, here, you inspect it. Take a look at those tits. <laughs> See the smile? Crazy keen. He's going to keep it now. Crazy keen. Ultimately, she's a soul who's standing proud of her body. She's earning her money, and she don't give a fig if you want to fuck off again. Take a look at her eyes, man. She's laughing at you. It's true, man. She is. She's an icon, a goddess. And every raincoated or bedsit bound member of her congregation cast their eyes up to see her and loves to come in her church. They fill the aisles and pews with their love, rivers of jizz flowing for her. <laughs> Baby, the love jazz is sounding. Hallelujah! Ooh, ah, ah, ah. It's our impotence, friends, and our impotence at the Godhead. That's why we're all frightened. That's why we want it all blowing back. The reason she strips is to blow the shit from that secret. And the reason they love her is because of that honesty. I mean, an English wank is a wink, but with so much extra muscle. It's a means of confirming your place in the palace of skin. Masturbation is flight. It's a means of escaping the body. Hands prime for liftoff. As the rocket leaves, you see stars. So our girl here is deep space. She's stars and suns. Astrid Astral. Let's assume our girl Swedish is that northern cool. Soothes our heat. That way we can blaze. We can always burn if we want to. We can also be honest, but only, of course, when we come. I'm talking about that moment, you know, when you're coming inside your sex partner, when you look them in the eyes, and turn them over, whatever, and you say, I am signing. I'm giving you this. We are sealing. Masturbation becomes sex's brief echo. It is the hand's prayer and pleasure. It is God's star-stung tongue on your rhythm. <laughs> to jerk off is to cry about all the sex you can't get to. It's the sad, salty tears of the body. The one-eyed recreation for what only two comprehend. I mean, I could wank for you right now, near you or on you. But which one would persuade you? Which one feels like love? Which one's the real you? Which one would offend you and send you out of here this evening, banishing thoughts of my squat little body with cleansing thoughts of your own? We restore our gods every night and revive them again in the morning, in the bath or the shower or the restroom at work when we're bored. So-called technological man, firing himself out of instinct, without rhyme or reason, 
wiping his mind on his hand. So who here will come? Who here is honest? Who here will join me? Why don't we all jerk it out? <laughs> Why don't you jerk it out now, sit and stand in your pews and jerk yourself numb for Jesus? Or if not Jesus, then that special someone that you have in your heart to revere. Your first love. Your last. Maybe the one you have sitting with you. Or that special someone. Spread eagled forever in the casting couch of the past. <laughs> Everybody! <laughs> Come on now, join me! Work is a rust call for trust! <laughs> Cowards, huh? <laughs> it's okay, man. I get it. Nuns dig re repression. But think of it this way. Come in the street, and you dance. The booze dig, you, you know, it, it's all without reason. The booze, they, they, they can get you. They, they'll get you out of that place. I mean, everything wrongs history. From what we do to kids to man's reason. After all, we sang Atlantis and lost all of Egypt's alien architects. The pyramids are a prize that we still aren't unwrapping. The pathway or portal to an entirely new way to be. The pathways, the, the, the ports. The changing states of opinion, be it wormhole or asshole, there in the shadows are the different things we should taste. Talking about pathways or ports or seas of change for that matter, let me now introduce you to my own throne of worship. Let me now introduce you to my own toilet seat. My pathway, my port, my toilet seat. My companion, the temple or throne room to the cleansing shit or the wank. <laughs> because before I go on, the first thing I should tell you is that I died on the toilet. I did, man. Like Elvis. Only I was fat with crack, not fried cheese. <laughs> I chased my heroine down, all golden brown, thin and ravaged. Spiked by her sting, no sweet titty could nourish me back to life. Oh, sir, I passed by, passed that on, and passed through this fucker. And that's why I keep it preserved in the death gallery. This storeroom for freaks has become the holiest of the holies. Life spirit pictured with each moment of life finding form. But I've got attached to it, you know, for my little wooden earth halo to my little round halo object, you know, intimate. Through these gates ye shall pass and piss in all senses. So here, have a look there. Take a look at my seat. It's a pan-dimensional thing, but as you can tell, there's no mirrors. There's no trap doors, are there? There's no racy ace in the lid, huh? <laughs> no, man, it is what it is. So let me lay my grit on you. In fact, I'll do better. Let me give you the whole Wittgenstein. Why a table? Table. Why are we chained? Tree. Combole. Why are we trained to think one way when we know deep within us other things might exist? I mean, this thing for me is more than wings. This is my earthly reminder. This is my past, my congealed gait, my breath hurdle. This is my antimatter that the matter I was disinterred. I lost my sense of bearing on this until all of eternity toppled. I was both Bert and Deborah into the ammonia waters and the river sticks the Jew swam. Put your arm through the hole, man. Put your arm through the, my death space. Now, there may be no glass in that mirror, but I saw an entirely new landscape through that. You don't believe him? Then die. You'll see. You'll dig it. But then, of course, we'll have to wait for you. And I'm pretty certain nobody here wants to do that. I died on the john because I was so full of shit, man. But not the drugs, no. The slander. 
dishonest men lined my scum. I'm talking about the cops who bend and fold so damn much you could stuff them in the envelope with the money. The judges who dress up like babies. The mayors who prowl the gay bars. Public opinion sliced me into bitter tears like an onion. Distrust, expectation, with acid pumped through the cistern until I was pushed through the system like a beacon burnt through dark shit. They pushed me on and took the oily air from the vacuum. I was pushed to the water. Because staring into toilets is to look at death's eyes, man. <laughs> Death seeks your image and cries with joy when you flush. It was a sea. Sea of hate. There I was, the spent sailor. As it dashed me to the shoreline, pushing me to the rocks, fit to bust. Okay, so this first bit is stand-up, so stay with me. That okay? Mm, yeah. That all right? Cool. Because I want you happy. I, I don't want, I want smoothness, you dig? I, I want ice cream and honey. I want a ballet on ice, sailing on, saving souls. The evangelic angelic. You know, uh, that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're cresting new order, we're, we're looking out for new life. <laughs> okay, man, dig. Um, so, but if it's not working, uh, tell me. If you think there's a problem, then heckle, and I promise you two things. I am straight out of here. <laughs> That's one thing. But the point is all this. I am cresting new rivers. I am pushing on to the darkness. I am selling on beyond you. I am on that new stream. I am on that new water. You're still Jordan bound, man, I tell you. I, I am up and above. I, I am free. And if we coalesce, so be it. That's just chemistry, baby. Talk. Chanel, perfect powder, sewers in seed, fever sperm. <laughs> okay, so um, the next thing I should tell you is I always start slowly, quite slowly, you know, thinking as I garden forms, in a sense. It's a habit I have, like a trick or a tumble. But you know, I think it's important enough to jump right on in. I mean, there are so many comics who will try and attack you. I mean, they'll just slap you and force you to eat their cold shit. It's true. And then temper it all with commonplace observation. I mean, is that what it happened? Did I die for that? Isn't it funny how, they would say. No, man, it's not. It isn't funny. The need for my peccadilloes has more meaning to me than the state of my uh, sock jaw, my girlfriend's hair, or my dick. My peccadilloes fuck friends. My peccadilloes wreck marriage. The easing of my peccadilloes sanctifies politics. Today's comics, they don't care. To them it's all status, and it's really a crime. Because comics hold the key to both truth and distraction. You know, from uh, John the Baptist to the king's fucking fool on the heath. And I'm talking about the real king, you dig? Far in the distance from Shakespeare. Divide the land, test the borders, Define the limits of death and true love, man alive. That's the joke. Ask John the Bee. No one got it, apart from him, on a platter. <laughs> Behold, he is come. So, Saladin masturbated. But Christ wasn't the cum that girl gathered. Christ wasn't the juice that chick squeezed. Sacrifice is the song. The soundtrack of the ages is the pale pretenders just topple and the real ones are raised to the ground. Ah, today's comics are whores. You better believe it. You turn any corner, you'll see those tired tits on the street. Dicks out as well, which you're not supposed to laugh at. The truth isn't their truth. All they want to know <coughs> is all them. Not me, though. Not them. Not now. No, no, I'm different. I'm like a school. I am classy. You have to treat me like the chick you're into. You have to treat me like the chick that you like. You work me, it's there. You whack me, it's Christmas. You work and whack with me, we get to see paradise. I'm a whore. So are you. We're all whores this evening. Tonight we are whores, man. Let's all whore it out. <laughs> I mean, sure. 
I could get onto a bit now before you, a bit or a riff or a line that you like, but I don't know. Would that make you like me? I mean, I don't know, man. You might boo me. And like me or loathe me, there is no way in heaven's gate or hell's kitchen that I want to be booed. No, sir. Believe me, boos to a comic are like uh, bird shit on an angel. They stain him forever. He never gets clean. Now, in Germany, boos are prized. The boos in death ain't, ain't my business, no. Boos are boos to the death scent alcoholic. That's what I think. They're, they're joy's villain. They're the apes cry of anger when man's jungle invasion appalls. Boos can bruise. It's life or shards of life that we're after. I'm seeking sensations. I'm after the flavor that soars and crests above sound. Which brings me around to my first bit this evening, which is about divination and the precise person of God. Because I don't understand I have this big question. If the so-called God is so perfect, then why did he make the ass? Why did God, let us face it, make something so ugly? I mean, let's be honest. The ass is an ugly machine. A wasteful engine of skin whose trade is pollution and whose entrance is blocked by a tiny staircase of shit and a portrait of hair. I don't get it, you dig? I don't understand if it's perfect. I, mean, I really don't get it. I thought God and the angels dug clean. What this does for me is bring the whole human design into question. This lump of stuff in the middle, with these four hanging vines at the edge. And then at the top, this, this thing that's truncated. This barb, this nodule, when the whole thing should rise and ascend. And then balance it all with the, with the weight of the stomach, man. And then at the base, this ripple of skin at the bottom. This, this crinkle of flesh tapering around the finger. The shit slip. What is it? Why did it? Think of that. This is where comedy comes in. The unstately grace of the body. The thing deep within us that makes us all incomplete. Okay. <clears throat> so, to get on top of this, I'd like everyone here to do me a favor. I'd, uh, I just want to see what you see. I'd like everyone here to take a quick look at the ass of your neighbor. Uh, the person beside you. Just, just take a quick peek. Is it nice? Is it pretty? Is it more pretty than the ass of your girlfriend? Is it more comely than the ass of your wife? Or your husband's? How high? How round? How firm? How peachy? Is it more sturdy than your father's asshole? Or cuter, perhaps, than the ass of your kid? Ah, uh -huh. there it is. That is the question. This is worse than the wanking. I'm whoring you and your ass. <laughs> Who here will look? Who here is honest? Because when we really look at each other, when do we see each other? When are we uh, uh, beasts, whether well, beasts in the field or the firing line or, do or dogs in the street? Who here will do it? Who here is worthy? Who here is ready to become a connoisseur of your ass? <laughs> I put it to you that you can't answer that question. Because deep down you're frightened. You are scared of your ass. We're also scared of so-called primal behavior. We're not even the wolf in sheep's clothing. We're not even the ape in cheap suits. No, we are frightened and scared because of what God has told us. You are shit split and lonely. You, my friends, are shit taken because the so-called God has convinced you the ass is dirty and evil. The so-called God, misbegotten, is an ass terrorist. Everyone here is in touch with this problem. You're all fucking anal. You sit in shit fear. Now you sit in shit fear because God said you are frightened. And you are frightened because God says you are. God rules this place with a clear rod of iron. And he's jacking it, Digby, right up your ass. <laughs> now he will do this not because he is evil, but because he is willing. He is willing us on. He is willing us on because that is his tradition. Because God had the idea, and man, after all, is the great changing shape. Now, God gets the glory because he made the paint. He had the concept of something that grows and moves through a cycle, from ape to accountant, you know what I mean? That's not much of a leap, but it is what, but it is what we like to get. But God wants us past that. He wants us way beyond that, only we're saying no. 
We're saying no because we believe everyone still has a right to be happy. Look around and you'll, you'll see it. The proof's in this room. But that's not what God wants. That's not what God's after. Our ass is God's entrance from one changing state to the next. Bullshit. That's crazy. But that's how it crumbles. Our little craplets are God's memos from heaven. His tiny reminders of the waste that we are. He wastes us, you dig? Like a fire wastes paper. In fact, there is nothing more wasteful since waste was created than beautiful man and his gorgeous woman. We are the targets for God's mighty plan. Now, I don't know about you, but deep down I sense it. I think there is something inside us which knows. Do you see? Do you dig? Do you hear what I'm saying? Something inside us which knows very clearly that this isn't the finish and that there are other better places to go. <laughs> places to change or to deliver us slightly, as if there were a gentle rope hanging a little way over the mess. But you know, we don't go. I mean, it happens so rarely. It's like we're suspicious, like we're scared of that change. Now, I see that as the key to our whole imperfection. It is the reason for hunger, it is why there is war. We are held by the things that we hate to have happen. Because if we are God's children, then he, she, it is the adult. The sense of responsibility passes, and we don't know what to do. We used to believe that cabals run the shadows. But the truth is quite different. Rudderless boats ride the screen, am I right? Sure I'm right. Do you understand what I'm saying? And what's worse, we allow it. And why do we? You guessed it, the crack in our ass! Now this brings me round to what I was originally saying. Say hello, convolution. We're going back up my ass. Am I right? Sure, I'm right. Or shall I go slowly? Because this thing can, I'm convinced of. The ass makes us feel dirty. And so rather than face it, we look up to God. From poetry at one end, Shit from the other. It makes us feel awful. It makes us feel ashamed of ourselves. If you look at this closely, it is all Jesus, Judas. It's yin and yang. Laurel, Hardy. The thing closest to you is what in the end does you down. We don't understand this whole life and death thing. This whole life and death thing is just pure contradiction. Because, you know, what is living, you know, if man is dead? Whew. Complicated. I know it, man. It's, it's crazy. But if you think of it this way, life and death attract opposites. Because the thing about death is that it offers commitment. Death is like marriage. It should be with you for life. So. When you die, you enter into a contract. And the agreed stipulations of what happens next. None of us see it, because we're so overloaded. All our lives, there are pressures, there are, there are things to go on. But it's, it's the people with nothing who are the ones we should learn from. I mean, they, they really teach us. They, through their nothing, show us what it is we should love. I mean, I, I can see tramps as I see priests or rabbis. They all live close to nature. They're aware of God's plan. In fact, I say to you that a tramp is more holy than a priest or rabbi because he has nothing. Not a house, not a car, not a three-month lease on his girlfriend. And yet he continues. The bum carries on. A tramp on the street is a modern-day hero. 
A saint in shit's clothing. You know what I mean? A scarred star. I know it sounds crazy, but I really believe it. I I'm convinced that it's true. No one is sure of what God is up to unless you are living very close to his plan. So by giving up things, you make yourselves pure. Am I right? You get cleaner. So what is cleaner than a dirty-ass bum? I mean, a, tr a tramp, a hobo, a vagrant, someone who looks up the actual asshole of life. It's like they remind us, you know, because we're all of us searching for God or for laughs or for strange sex or, or treasure, and searching always in the most way out of places, of the ass of our apartments or in shabby hotel rooms, in badly cooked dinners or the most expensive of foods, in a family photograph or old high school album, on our dad's neck or shoulders, in our old grandma's hand. But you know, it's not there. It happens so rarely, and baby, I've seen it. Human misbehavior is what makes us all fold, crumple, fall. Okay, so that was a bit that was long. An example. Now, that's an example of where one bit can go. Now, but I am crafty, you know, I really am quite a craftsman. So I will always balance a fact for a thin one, you know what I mean? Okay. Right, uh, perhaps I should say who I was. My name's Bruce, Lenny Bruce, Schneider first. My God busted. Some know me. Some are too young, but I'm there in the books in the background all the same. I was the very first comic to have tested the borders. And for those who'd researched me, that is all that I did. I had some uh, books and uh, plays and, and a film made about me. And I had a wife and a kid and a mother who dug me. And on top of that, I had a past. I played the joints in the clubs throughout the 50s and 60s, although I never made it to 67 and the famous Summer of Love. Man, I would have rampaged through that. <laughs> I'd have been my own Maharishi, with one hand on the soul space and the other, you know, somewhere else. <laughs> but not to be. There it is, as is written. So be it. Say la vie, baby. Say them all. Let it be. Years of slipping on between strippers brought me to that man. Nights of stained satin, vaseline on the floorboard, grit greasy gardens, hours of ice cubes soothing the sticky smoke tits. MC at the joints, that's the real story of how I got started. MC at the strip joints, fag's favorite. No joke, believe me, it jokes your business. Just blood on the beer stains and piss and sweat in the dark. But I think it's important, you know, to know where it is, where you come from. Your roots are important, because why else, why the fuck are you here? Back when I started, people were there to see tit on the catwalk, to see some blonde chicks a goddess, you know, on parade. I even married one, man, my beautiful big busted honey. She was a redhead. Oh, honey, I drank you. But these days, these days is different. You have to look a bit harder. You have to look a bit deeper to catch a, a sight of yourself. There's a quote. Somebody said once that man is God in ruins. I really dig that. I see us as the rubble and him as the house. This whole man and God scene is just pure bricks and mortar. God is the mixture that keeps that house up. God is the glue that binds the bones and the letters, the bricks and baguettes, the kicks that we get, all be gat. Okay, sure bit, man, okay? Well, I'm like a vulture. I am moving you on, I will cover it all. Now, when I was a kid, I was a little bit Jewish. Well, as a matter of fact, I was Jewish. And big reveal, I still am. <laughs> but there is something about being Jewish which makes you a grant you a little bit of a fatty. Jews start to get flabby because, you know, the Jews love to eat. Now, they couldn't always. That's an important thing to remember. <coughs> but these days, come the crisis, the Jew will call for a dinner. For the Catholics, confession. But for the Jews, onions, eggs, a little piece of salami. 
Maybe a strudel, just to make sure there's some fruit. <laughs> we were deprived, then depraved, in quick succession. Of all the people in Europe, did you know the Jews are the most traveled? I mean, they beat the gypsies. Those Jews fucking move. So the first sign of trouble, and a Jew will start packing. He's like a cattle. He's packing and, and eating and getting the show fit to blow. But when they stay, man, when they stay, oh man, it's much better. The whole thing gets richer. You even get Hollywoods. Most Jews are jazz. They love to keep mixing. Some of them, yeah, they may lay some unearthly claim on a high street. But most Jews are coffee. They love to blend in. That's what I do. I stay, man, and blend it. And the whole Goyish parish tried to cancel me out. They did a good job, because I died on the toilet. With a beatnik beard for the camera and a rusted spoon up my ass. I had more thick shit inside me than you could shake a slick stick at. My holes are all full, man. I assure you that. The point of all this is that at the end of our lives, our days amount to be so much blotting paper. And the things that happen are uh, staying the pages in, in God's uh, copybook. You get either a smear or a star, depending, of course, on your uh, habit, which either comes with a needle or a heart attack primed by guilt. The page blossoms or, or folds on account of what it is you've been up to. The whole thing will cause it because of what you have made or, 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 or said. You become a blanket of words which death juve smothers. The white shroud erases, pushing you into the black. It could be a beautiful thing. Maybe that's why I chased it. The Jew on the run forced to locate his own Eden. The homeboy's exile, banging on the pyramid door to get in. Show me your truths. Show me your lost private chambers. Take me back to your darkness. Take me back to the source. It's hard to explain, but I don't want to tell you Drugs came to save me. They really did. Drugs are key. Drugs are needs, masturbation. Drugs provide destination when you ache for escape. And I, I ached for escape the way a nun aches for Jesus. Both bones and body, even if the flesh still denies. Can I say that? It's, it's strange. It's also real pretty. A drug is a dream is a drag, is a drug. I locate the vein, I find and I tap it. I breathe and I feed it, I give birth to the vein. I locate the vein, I tease and I stare it. I give it a name and declare it. I bind a sweet fucker down. I locate the vein, I penetrate and I fuck it. I take it to the movies, I dance it to dawn. I locate the vein, we go on vacation together. Moving out across water in my paper boat and syringe. I locate the vein, I stab and I suffer. I pop it up, I am its parent. I locate the vein, I locate the vein. I locate the vein and I learn to suffer. I suffer for Jesus and for God sent above. I locate the vein, the vein will escape me. The vein will ensnare me. The vein is my key. I am the Jew Buster Dig, and I am hard on my children. I will kill or confuse them, send them out to the sand. They will work. They will make Hollywoods, accountants, lawyers, and dentists. They will be shit and Shylock, cockroach and king to earn me. Don't let anyone ever say that the so-called God, so-called chosen have had it easy. No, man, the so-called God, so-called chosen have in fact had it bad. Jews have it bad because they have the talent. The blacks have the jazz, cocks, and rhythm, but the Jew has the shtick. The Jew makes the face, does the shrug, and cries for his mother. The society is toppled. You have my word. The Jew stands. Was it Abraham's fault doing that knife shit to Isaac? Because that is the image of devotion to God and weak men. What did he choose us for? To be hated? Caught in Hitler's craw or all the worlds now? As the Middle East sparks and foams? Man, I, I saw it all. And 
I wanted comfort. And so I tried to chase it. I got that comfort in right away. So I got fatter through cake. Chocolate cake came to save me. When heroin couldn't soothe me, I turned to Kathy cake. A chain sweet. Something thick, deep and rich for when the soul has grown weak and tired. When I was here in 1963, I asked that thin guy in London to score me chocolate cake before dawn. Peter Cook, funny guy. They say that Jackie Kennedy fucked him. Peter Cock, we should call him. <laughs> or Peter Coke, also dead. Now, Peter C. could say what he liked, and I heard it all in, in, in the alley. Derek and cunt, man, I heard that. Uh, but he got away. Now, Peter C. could, could say what he liked, because he had the breeding. If you say please and thank you, you can fuck him up the ass. They'll allow. And it's nonsensical now, because this was, what, six years later? But then there it was. Peter was tall and good-looking, as opposed to being short and good-looking, like me. <laughs> That's where the difference is, Dick. So they did. All around me. Until each stage was a grave space that I toppled into hourly. I was rehearsing, I guess, for my long subjugation, my push to the water and the last toilet flush. Say, man, I'm drained. Let's say we all take a breather. Coming back to life is uh, exhaustive <laughs> and exhausting, too. Death lag sucks. Say to you, let me think on that while uh, they fill their throats with distraction. And I'll think of you, baby, singing the love song that only Spunk gets to write. Blackout! <laughs>